Recently, I've gotten much better at air roll and aerial car control. And if you've seen any of the recent videos, you'll know I've been putting a ton of practice into my mechanics and I think I finally learned what works. So today I wanna to share my complete air roll settings with you all that I now know actually work to hopefully help you learn air roll faster as well as what situations to use each type. Also, since many of you who watch these settings guides are new to the channel, if you're new here and don't yet know, season five of my private coaching program is nearly sold out. I take players in every six weeks and we just crossed 90% capacity for season five and we're on pace to sell out in the next seven days. So if you're new here and you're interested in getting in on one of those last 10 spots before we sell out and the prices go up, my DMs on Discord are still public, they're still open, so if you're interested, you should DM me the keyword 90% to get involved. Otherwise, enjoy the video, guys. All right, so before we get into the big questions, which are, you know, like key binds, what should you have arrow bound to? Which arrow should you have? How should you use them? When should you use them? Before we talk about that, there's actually one arrow setting that affects your aerial car control that I don't think a lot of people think about when they think arrow, which is aerial sensitivity. Now, a lot of people say the setting is just personal preference, but over the past, like, 100 hours of me playing, practicing higher level mechanics, I've actually realized something specific about aerial sensitivity that actually matters if you want to get to the higher levels with car control. Specifically, I found that when spinning my car in the air, going for flicks, delayed flicks, flip reset musties or musty flicks, high level flicks like that, where your jump is on a timer, not having a high enough aerial sensitivity actually hurts you and makes it harder to execute the mechanic. What I mean, for those of you who don't know, is that aerial sensitivity basically controls, you know, how how responsive your car is in the air, how quick it is to move, how easy it is to, to spin around. And when your jump's on a timer, if your sensitivity is too low, and for example, you want to prepare for a musty flick off the ground, you won't be able to spin your car quick enough back before your jump expires, and it can actually mess with your aerial car control. Recently, I was actually in a 2v2 game, completely randomly queued up against Hankovic and Mesco. And something I found is that players who have really, really good aerial car control across the board have higher than default aerial sensitivities. Me personally, I play on 1.8 controller sense and 1.8 aerial sensitivity, but I looked at other players. I looked at Mesco, he plays on 1.75 each. And I think a Vample is at 1.45 or 1.4 as well. Uh, but basically what I found is that high level players with good aerial car control almost always across the board have higher than default aerial sensitivities. And I think it's for this reason. So I've tried experimenting with a really high controller and aerial sensitivity. I found that when I put it above 1.8, when I increased it to two for a little while, I just completely lost control of my car. It was not worth it. But what I do recommend you do is try to work up your aerial sensitivity over time to in between that 1.4 to 1.8 aerial sensitivity range. I think it's best. Now onto the question that everybody has, which is what air roll should I have? Should I have both air rolls? Should I have one air roll? Should I have joystick air roll? Where should I have them bound to? And when should I use them? So let's answer the big questions now. Firstly, from my experience, what types of air roll should you have? I'm going to argue, in my opinion, I think it's easiest and fastest to learn aerial car control and air roll control if you have one directional air roll and one joystick air roll, just neutral bound. Reason being is because if you want to learn air roll left and air roll right, well, I do think it's great to have perfect control over both of them and it's ideal to have perfect control over both of them in the long run, it's going to take so much longer. It's going to take twice as long to learn both air roll left and air roll right, when in reality, the situations that you would need them are very, very rare. I think you can get like 95 to 99% of aerial car control 
with just one air roll bind. And most pros I know have made it all the way up to the top with just one joystick air roll and one directional air roll. So they'll either choose the master air roll left or master air roll right. And I think that is the quickest way to progress. So what I've done is I bound my air roll left to my square key bind on my PS4 controller, and I bound my neutral air roll to the same button as my power slide on R1. Really, it doesn't matter where your air roll left or air roll right and where your neutral air roll is. As long as you follow that one tip, which I recommend is binding your joystick air roll to your power slide. I'll explain when I use each one, but that is the best setup, I think, for air roll key binds. Only thing to be careful of is while you hold air roll left or air roll right, one issue I've run into lately with having my air roll left right next to my jump button is that sometimes I can accidentally flip when I don't want to. Because if you didn't know, if you hold air roll left or hold air roll right while you click jump, you'll actually flip in that direction accidentally. With a little bit of fat fingering, you can get over it, but that's what I'd recommend for key binds. Then on to the last big question, which is, okay, Luke, if you're going to recommend that I use one directional air roll and one normal air roll bound to my power slide button, when should I use each one? What's the actual point? So after a little bit of time, I can confidently recommend the strategy now. Basically, what you want to do when you're learning air roll is learn how to control your directional air roll off of every surface in the air. For example, if you're an arrow left user, you want to learn how to use arrow left jumping off the left wall. You want to learn how to use arrow left jumping off the right wall, and you want to be able to use it off the ground and off the backboard. The only situations where you'll use your joystick arrow is basically when you're on the way down, when you're falling down. So if I'm ever recovering or using an empty jump off the wall, that's when I use my joystick air roll. If I'm ever landing awkwardly after an aerial or recovering around my net, I use my joystick air roll. Or basically when I'm near the ground doing dribble mechanics, I use my normal air roll. So essentially what I've learned practicing in the last 100 hours is that having a high aerial sensitivity is good as long as you can manage it. Having one directional air roll is totally fine and actually it's easier to learn. And then just make sure you master joystick air roll on recoveries and off the wall or when you're coming down. And if you have those buttons bound to power side, it'll make it really easy to do that. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.